Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who's responsible for the murder of thousands of innocent men, women, and children. Welcome, everyone, to General Quarters Podcast. Glad to have you with us this week. Hey, we're really starting to hit our stride here with this show. I'm really happy with the way things are going, and we've had some some really good um, feedback from from all of you that are listening, and I appreciate that. Remember, if you're a veteran, and this is what this show is truly about, to share our experiences, please reach out to me at generalquarterspodcast at gmail.com. That's generalquarterspodcast at gmail.com. Now, this week, I'm interviewing Barrett Tillman. Barrett has written over 51 books. You're going to hear that again. And um, he is just a fascinating guy. He wrote some, some great historical uh, books on um, World War II, mostly in aviation, carrier aviation, uh, whirlwind, fantastic books, class for the carriers. And he also um, covers uh, the USS Enterprise CV-6, my personal favorite ship of all time. And we, ta- we discussed this. Now, I just wanted to give you all a heads up that we had some technical difficulties getting connected through our normal means. So I had to copy and record off a cell phone so it sounds a little bit more tinny than you're used to. This interview does not go very long. It's a nice kind of quick show, but hopefully people will enjoy what he has to say and we'll look him up and also uh, take advantage of some of the books that he's done and you'll learn from them. So thank you all for joining today. We're going to pick up this interview right now with Mr. Barrett Tillman. Welcome to the General Quarters Podcast, a show that focuses on warriors and warships and a look at the historic and modern day adventures that have shaped the battle space. We're speaking with Barrett Tillman, an incredible historian and author who has written 51 books to date. Some of his more recent works include Forgotten 15th, The Daring Airmen Who Crippled Hitler's Oil Supply, U.S. Marine Corps Fighter Squadrons of World War II, uh, a book on the Enterprise, Whirlwind, Clash of the Carriers, and Duel over Douai. I hope I said that correctly, Barrett. Barrett, welcome aboard, sir. Thank you. Glad to be aboard, sir. It's it's a it's a real honor to talk to you. I, I can't I can't explain it enough. And um, you know, I, I think I told you I was rereading Clash of the Carriers, and um, and that that book um, is is one of my one of my favorites, along with Whirlwind, which I, I learned a lot from. And then digging in and seeing your biography on your website, I was like, man, there's a lot here. Like, could, you, could you tell us how you got started and what drove your passion for writing and the focus on World War II in particular? Well, I uh, was exceptionally astute in my choice of parents. And uh, my dad had been trained as a naval aviator in World War II. And consequently, I grew up flying and was fortunate to get about five or six hundred hours in uh, naval aircraft uh, of of that era and had really wanted to become a naval aviator, but my eyes went bad in uh, grade school, so that was not a possibility. However, um, with the background I had in restoring and flying some historic aircraft, it was sort of a a natural development for me to... uh, uh, be drawn into writing about naval uh, aircraft and naval aviation generally. So it was uh, uh, kind of a long way around, but it's been a, uh, a very rewarding experience, and I'm really fortunate to be able to make a full-time career of it. It's one thing to have a passion and want to do things in life, and then you know you're, you're told no, and then it goes in a completely opposite direction. And and you know it's it's funny because my my career goal. Barrett was 
was to, uh, you know, one day command ships at sea. That's what I always wanted to do. And um, uh, color blindness kept me from becoming a surface warfare officer <laughs> when I got out of school. So I, I stayed enlisted and, and went on to command small boats in riverine warfare. That, that's where, uh, you know, I grew up. But, you know, it's, it's like, okay, you know, you, you, you start down one path, um, you know, for whatever reason, you can't do it. And so then you, you just make it better. But on a scale of things, man, it's, it's incredible um, what you've accomplished and, um, and the skill set that you bring. You know, one of the things that um, really impressed me uh, in, in reading uh, your books in general is how you're able to pull together what's happening outside of the war. You know, I mean, a lot of fun facts that, that get thrilled in there. And then the other piece that um, I think you do very, very well uh, and, and, you know, I can honestly say I've not read all 51 of your books, um, not even close. But when I, when I read um, uh, Whirlwind and then, and then read um, The Clash of the Carriers and, and talking about the great Marianas tur turkey shoot, or in, in both of those books, you know, um, talking about the air war, in, air war in Japan, the distances and the logistics – you know, when you read these stories in a lot of books, a lot of that doesn't come together. What you did brilliantly, I think, was, you know, really allow the reader to understand and comprehend just the incredible distances and the logistics that, were, that, that, that had to be put in place in order to prosecute the war and to put these strategies in place. I mean, it was amazing. And when you were researching and putting together this mosaic on the air war in Japan in particular, uh, what, what were your other key learnings that came from that, sir? Well, you make a very good point, Ken. The, uh, the logistic and supply side of the story is so seldom uh, told. And I realized both in uh, Clash of the Carriers and in Whirlwind that there was a rare opportunity to acknowledge the vital contributions that uh, the, uh, the haulers and the lifters had uh, made to uh, the success of, of both uh, those parts of the Pacific War. And uh, one of the, the things that uh, was especially uh, mindful to me uh, with the uh, Clash of the Carriers was the ability of the Pacific Fleet Service Squadron, or Service Force, mm -hmm. to... Uh, keep uh, fast carrier task groups fully supplied at sea for weeks and even months at a time. And that had just never been done before. Of course, uh, the, the Pacific War was unique. We, we had never fought anything remotely similar to that. And uh, consequently, Admiral Calhoun and uh, his guys in Surf Fork did a wonderful job. And by the same uh, uh, extension with Whirlwind, uh, hardly anybody gives any thought to where do all the bombs come from right. that were loaded into B-29s on Guam and Saipan and Kenya. So I address the uh, the naval uh, logistics support of the B-29 bombing campaign as well, and it, it's been very well received. Yeah, and, and, and I'm glad because, you know, it, it's funny, um, in, in my real-life world, I run operations for you know a multi-billion dollar medical device company and running operations. I mean, it's all supply chain. It is, it is so complex. Um, and, and you think about how much easier it is today, you know, how much faster things move, but still it's, it's a challenge in peacetime, uh, just moving orthopedics products around the world. You know, when you're talking about um, the threat of being destroyed, um, weather, uh, poor communications, uh, even, you know, you know, I have to say, Barrett, you know, when I was reading about just, just the flights um, of the B-29 and, and the long distances, um, I believe, from China and India, uh, <laughs> what they were trying to pull off, it is amazing, um, you know, the, the skill set and the courage that it took to do it. It, it, is, um, it is very, very humbling. The more I read and reread and, and kind of re-educate myself again, you know, as a, as a person who served in the Navy for a long time, um, you, you, it is funny, the, the, the muscles uh, memory that you kind of forget and what it takes to, 
uh, orchestrate and organize a successful operation. Uh, I'll tell you, you, you do just a brilliant job bringing that to light. And I think the, um, you know, a lot of times when they talk about the bullets and the beans, it's not a very sexy, glamorous type thing, but um, what, what you're able to illustrate and, and do so well in your books, I think, is is bring that all home. It is, it is like I said, it was incredibly humbling. You know, the war fighters get all the, get all the, uh, get all the glory, but none of that happens without all these brilliant people put together incredible strategies. Well, that's exactly right. And that, that's, uh, as I say, that's why I want to devote at least a small portion of each book to that subject. And, uh, uh, in another, uh, aspect in the, uh, History of the 15th Air Force that flew from Italy. That mm-hmm. book is Forgotten 15th. I uh, consulted a couple of my former uh, uh, Oklahoma and Texas uh, oil well friends and educated myself about what is involved in petroleum production because, of course, the, the 15th primary target was the uh, plastic uh, refinery complexes around. Uh, uh, Romania in 1944. So uh, I, I, I tried to provide background and context for the subject of each of my books and uh, whether it's uh, uh, the, the oilers and the uh, dry goods ships at sea or the, uh, uh, the bomb dumps on uh, the Marianas or the, uh, the prime target uh, re- refineries in Europe. Those are all part of the story and I, I really think that they are equally deserving of being included. If I could switch direction soon, because I know we, we have a short amount of time, but I've, I've got my order for Enterprise, America's Fighting a Ship. It's, it's on the way. I'm excited about that. Um, this is by far one of my favorite categories. It's my favorite ship in Navy history. I'm even a Star Trek fan because Enterprise is part of that <laughs> show. All right, and I and, and and you know it still bothers me that that storage ship was scrapped. I think that that's criminal. But what were what were the what were the I guess what was the thing that that really drove you to write about this this storied vessel? In 1964, when I was uh, just barely starting high school. I uh, read Edward P. Stafford's wonderful Mm -hmm. book published in 1962 called The Big E. And he had spent, I think, about five years researching and writing it when he was on active duty. He was a a multi-engine naval aviator who was acquainted with Ernest Hemingway. And that book was one of the two or three most influential uh, in, in my writing career, I, I was struck not only by the subject itself, but by uh, Ed Stafford's uh, exceptional writing talent. And 50 years passed, and uh, I was able to contact him by email. Never had the pleasure of meeting him in person, but uh, he, he told me, make sure that you give Adequate attention to the White Hats. The, uh, for your audience who may not know, that's the enlisted sailors who mm-hmm. comprise the huge majority of uh, the crew of any aircraft carrier. And I was able to do that. So uh, along the way, I had been uh, fortunate in meeting and getting to know a large number of Enterprise veterans, uh, mostly air crew, but not entirely. Mm-hmm. So. When, when that book was published, I think it was in 2010, uh, it was kind of a last-minute grab at history because by that time, fewer than half of the contributors were still living. So as is often the case, especially with World War II subjects these days, any book that's written on a particular topic of that time frame likely is going to be the last one ever written with a significant contribution from those who actually live the events. Right, right. Well, like I said, it's. Uh, I'm glad you did that. And, you know, and as, as a, as an enlisted man myself, um, it means a lot when people focus on that. I, I think that, uh, you know, we, and, and I'm a, I'm a big, um, a fan of of the naval leaders of World War II. You know, from from King to Spruance, and Spruance is my all time favorite admiral, um, and studied his leadership qualities and skill sets and. So, I mean, those guys, uh, you know, were phenomenal and, and intelligent and in what they were able to pull off. 
but the folks that actually execute the mission that get it done that allow the ships to sail in the first place you know they oftentimes uh, just just don't get the